3C is about community, character, and courage. And our mission is to love God and to love people. Let's tune in to this week's sermon. Come on, make it louder for Jesus! so awesome to see the crowd peppered with all the new people who came to Jesus this week. And we have all the new babies in Christ, a great hand. Those returned to him this week. Come on, let's give him a great hand. Yes, we're so happy you're here with us. And uh, I want to jump right into this because I ran out of a lot of time this morning in the first service. So I'm going to jump right into this. But we're going to be speaking about family, as you've already been told, and um, speaking about the ministry, speaking about the vision, because it's all one thing. One thing you need to understand, confusion comes when your identity is screwed up. When you think you're this and this, you're a father, you're a boss, you're a husband, you know, no, you're a son of God. That's it. Be a son. Be a daughter. Two, two identities in the world. Son of God, daughter of God. Or lost. When you get saved, you become a son, you become a daughter of the father. You're already him. You're already that. It's just you need to accept it and make it a part of your life. And I trust if you've not been born again, that today you'll ask Jesus into your heart. Begin to think about that. Where would you be without Jesus? If he was to come today or your life was called on you today, it's a truth, it's a fact. Many people woke up this morning, they will not see tomorrow. It's just a fact. People die every day. And that's not morbid, that's the process. This is not the end result. This is just the two inches on a million foot rope. The first two inches is what we do on the planet while you're in time and space. Then you have millions and billions of years of eternity as a result of this two minutes, this two inches. Are, are you with me today? And so that's why we're very intentional. We're very focused. We know exactly where we're going. We know exactly how we're going to get there. And we know exactly who God's going to use. You. If you choose. Amen? So are you awake this morning? Today's hashtag, if you do that thing, is called, uh, let me see if I can find it, designed for blessing. Say, I was designed. I did not evolve from a monkey. Though sometimes we act like one. Sometimes I act like an ape. Hey, easy. Who was that? Put the camera, no, I'm just kidding. Security! <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we were designed for blessing. Why does God want to bless you? He wants you to be just like daddy and bless others. It's not blessed for you to have your quaint little... See, the vision will always interrupt your plans. The number one enemy of Christ's vision for the planet is our traditions. And I shared this the last service. My mom, bless her heart, she's the most amazing woman in the world. And I have a nice picture of her right next to my desk. And, and my brother was visiting the other day. And he said, you need to put that in the back so we can see her on stream. I said, no, no, no. It's, she keeps her eye on me there. And, uh, but when we started the church, she had been through hell. She suffered a divorce. It was hectic. It broke her. Because if there was a woman who loved family, it was my mom. A woman who knew how to do Christmas, my mom. Could cook, my mom. And by the way, I was her favorite. <laughs> I'm joking. And, 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 and here's the thing. When we started, when we left re religion and went into purpose, it was offensive to her. And she began to whisper. She contacted family members. <laughs> What's going on with Mike? He's gone cuckoo. And, and I remember one conversation with her, and one was about the first Sunday she came in Pittsville. She felt like I had called her out because we preached about divorce. We talked about divorce. And she felt like I was singling her out. And I asked Mama, I said, do you want me to get divorced? Then I must speak about it. I don't fault you for what you went through, but I wanted to stop here and I need your help. And I remember the shift took place from her being offended that our Sunday dinners were now maybe on a Tuesday night because Sunday is now, for me, it's a work day. My Sabbath is different than a lot of yours. 
And, and so I said, I'll get to spend more time with you. See, that's what God does. When we give up the, the two-hour Sunday dinner, we can get four or five hours throughout the week that we wouldn't normally have. God always, when you sow into him, he always multiplies it back. And I remember when the shift took place and she would sit through services and weep because souls were being saved. My mom used to walk in anointing and the, the, this, she, all she'd do is get up and sing and people start coming to the altar and getting saved. It's an anointing. And as I sat over there today and I watched, I watched my grandson play soccer yesterday. That was fun. But today I sit over there and he was standing right over here just worshiping the Lord with everything that's in him. Because when I changed from religiosity, it creates an inheritance for generations. And as we were riding in the car, I picked him up from school this week, and I picked all, it was on G day, and I, I got to drive, and I went and picked all the kids up from school. And we were talking about Jesus. They were talking about how Emery led. She said, what's that place called, the, the car up, the ride up? Where they pick up the kids, what do they call that? Car the car ride place. And I'm like, what? The who? Where was that? Oh, at school. And now what happened? I led someone to Jesus at the car ride up. And she's telling the whole story. And then Hannah began to speak vision. Somebody say vision. vision. When your traditions get interrupted, vision becomes a dirty word. Because you've been used to being blind. You're used to suffering through and making it on your own. Just you and Jesus. But when you lift up your eyes and you begin to do something, when you begin to impact nations, this is what he said. His grandmother took him on a trip to New York. And uh, not G, but Momo, right? I say it right? Momo took him. And he said, he says, I want to go to New York. And I'm like, what? New York? What do you want to go to New York for? There's a big church there. I said, you know, Pastor Burt has been talking about New York. And do we have any prospects for New York? Hint, hint. Hannah says, I'll go. I'll preach in New York. I want to preach at that big church. <laughs> now, hold on. I'm not finished. When Jared was about his age, maybe a little younger, we were getting ready to head to Delmarva, church we used to, I was youth pastor there. And he's sitting there watching the guy from Arizona, big Assemblies of God church, huge church with balconies. And he, looked, he pointed at the TV, I want, to, I want to preach in a church like that. Generation to generation to generation. Now listen, not, not everybody is going to do this like I do, but you're all going to do this like I do. You see, you become who you associate with. And if we'll allow the Holy Spirit like he did my mom to bring change to her in her senior last years, my father who renounced everything I did because it was a little bit different than what he was used to, on his deathbed. In fact, I, I, was ha I asked Garrett and them to make this screen of all the marriages and baby dedications, and because we're talking about family. And my dad's video from his funeral that he didn't know he was making at the time in his hospital bed, I'm, I'm recording him, and he's just talking about how he loves Jesus. Just one more soul, just one more soul. If I, if I come out of here, I'm gonna leave one more person to Jesus. And God gave him a few days where he was, he was better. He got up out of his bed, went to the piano in this rehab center, began to play the piano. He didn't know in two weeks he'd be dead, but he's singing about Jesus. Goes back to bed and had his little burst of energy, and then, then he went home to be with Jesus. I want to tell you something today. Every minute you have in life is precious. And the people that are in your life from the early years to now, nothing's for nothing. The relationships that Paula and I have from our childhood, have from my parents to the people, the first time I ever was in the room with Paula, was in a place in Pittsville called Christian Country Camp, Kitty's Camp. And there was a teacher there teaching about the fruits of the spirit. I still remember in the woods, the banana, the orange, and it's her sister and her husband here today, Tom, that was there then serving all those years ago. That's a whole lot of years. And I, you know, like I, I told somebody today, we got our social security letter. I'm like, this isn't for me. They got the wrong person. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> You got some decisions to make. I threw it in the floor. <laughs> there. Anyway, get out of that rabbit hole here. But I, I did want to, I want to honor Bev and Tom because 
we were talking about family and they walk in today. They're missionaries in Haiti. They're, they're standards of the faith. They were, hold on, I don't have time for your claps right now. Hold on, I gotta get this done. I wanna say this. They are amazing people and part of the reason why Paul and I are here today is because they were the ones who stood next to us when things were shaky back in the day. When we were uncertain in the dysfunctionality of some of what we experienced as younger people in the Lord. But it's people who don't quit. People who are faithful. And that's the kind of people you need to find relationships with people now while you're young. And you maintain that relationship until you're old. And you too will be found faithful. You need people in your life. It's not just you and Jesus. You need people. And I, from the bottom of my heart, I love both of you very much. And this is all about you too. Everything that touches, everything in Haiti, everything here. And that's when we come together, you become that. And I'm going to share that in just a moment. But I just want to take time. Can we give him a can now? Bev and Tom Brumley, we love you guys. And happy birthday. I think Tom's 17 now. So let's get into this. Design for purpose. You were designed, you did not evolve. We need to talk about this more often. In your house. It doesn't do me any good to say this on Sunday if you don't go in your house and, and tell your, your son, hey, you're a son of God. You're designed to be blessed as a man forever. Masculinity that's going to come from you is designed by God. Are you hearing me today? You don't have to protest. You just need to disciple. Stop protesting and whining about what's wrong in the culture and raise your children, raise your boys to be men. You're not raising children, you're raising adults. Cut that apron string and that cutesy, no, discipline your children. Disciple them, raise them up. And they're not afraid of you, you see the results of that. Generations, they follow you when you do the right thing. They see behind the talking in tongues. Listen, I did church and we did it good. We had some good services. The problem was nobody was changing. We still talked carnal. We still didn't win people to Jesus. We still didn't do it. We just had a good service. Go to Denny's and talk about it for two hours and no change. No real change. My marriage never shifted to a better place. But God. Amen. When you step in and have sight where there's no vision, people will perish. Families will perish. Marriages will perish. And so I want us to see this today. Our purpose it's only one, it's only one purpose. There's only one vision, there's only one destiny that God has designed for you. He designed you for purpose. Now it looks different. Culturally it'll be a little bit different. You know, we're, we found out today that we're gonna be doing a marriage encounter in Africa and in Paris. That should be romantic. We found out, you know, that, that we're gonna be taking this what we do to other places. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. And God says, don't change, wear your hat, son of God. Don't ha I don't have to be French. Comment allez-vous? Je me permets Oui, oui. No, I don't have to go to the bathroom. Yes, yes. See? Si? Oh, that's Spanish. So I'm not going to try to, to prove that I know something, but what I know. You see, I have to bring my... T see, the diversity in the freshness of the vision is your testimony, because you're the only one that can tell your testimony but the principle's the same. Otherwise, we'd be confused. That's where confusion comes in when we try to rewrite the vision. We try to rewrite the purpose. No, your testimony, blood of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, word of our testimony. Marriage is the arrowhead of the family. Now, don't be sad if you've been through divorce or five divorces. If you're married now, make this your last. Make a decision, this is the last, I'm gonna do it God's way. The redemptive power of the blood can also heal you from divorce. Religion also taught me that anybody who got divorced was going straight to hell and they could never get married again. That's what religion says, condemnation. The people who write those rules and put those impressions on you are people who are dealing with inner sin that never got freedom from it. Listen, I've been around the block enough times to know. Right? When I go to Pastor Cesar, I know he's been around the block more times. I sit, I shut up, I listen, I learn. And then I see the fruit of it. The only way you can judge something is by the fruit of it. You judge a tree by the fruit of its life. If there's plums on the tree, is a plum a tree? Is there a plum tree? Okay, I didn't know, I, I, I'm not that educated. But I've been with God, right? 
And here's the thing. An apple tree is going to grow apples. When you're plugged in and you have the DNA, you are an apple tree, you're born again, you're going to what? You're going to produce bloop, fruit. It's just a natural thing. If there's no fruit, bloop, something's wrong. Now, wait a minute. Everybody's not the same. Yes, you are. Some are plums, some are oranges, some are apples. But we're all supposed to produce fruit and fruit that remains. I don't have time to get into all that. We're going to talk about that at the marriage encounter. Fruit that remains is the generational part. It speaks to generations. So today I want us to, as we have just come off and we're, we're going to be ministering to families, and maybe you're here today and there's brokenness in your family, don't be sad. It's an opportunity because deliverance is coming to your house. Freedom is coming to your home. Restoration and healing coming to your house. Amen? Divorce doesn't have to visit your family ever again. Amen? Let me get into this. So, one purpose, one vision, love God, love people. How do you love God? How do you love people? Share Jesus with them. If you t say you love somebody and you know they're not born again, you literally almost hate them if you don't tell them about Jesus. You're more concerned about your reputation than your, and listen, I get it, I was there. I was at that place with my family. I was at that place with my next door neighbor. And you've probably heard me tell this story more than once, how after 18 years of living next door, I never asked him about Jesus. Did I invite him to church? Yep. When his dad died, what do you do? You take fried chicken. We blessed him and we showed him, we invited him to our Christmas production. And he came, but never sat with him and said, Ernie, are you born again? And do you know what that means? I'm Catholic. I said, okay. Jesus died for Catholics too. He died for the Muslim. He died for the straight, the gay. That we can all be born again and come out of our sin. Are you hearing me today? It's that simple. But we get stuck on our theology. We get stuck on, on what we think. And we get, we get stuck on people who spoke words into your life. You don't even know if they're living right. And you'll challenge the word of someone you're in relationship with decades. I remember Pastor Burke came to me one time about the fifth year of challenging. He said, you know what? I'm done with this. If you don't want what I have, I'll still bless you. I'll still pray for you. But I can't spend time with you. And I'm like, I'll knock you out. <laughs> we'll settle this right now. Dropped him off the airport. And I'm like, I'm done. Driving back where the, about Bay Bridge is where, Bay Bridge was always my weeping point. It took that long for the Holy Spirit to say, you idiot. Who do you think you are? And I think back to my former pastor, Ray Chamberlain, and how I treated him. What an idiot I was. Challenging him and talking back to him. If he'd had a little bit of pastor burden in him, he might have slapped me back then and saved me a few years. Because he had some hands that could slap. He slapped me, he'd knock me out forever. Maybe that's why God didn't give him any pastor Bert. <laughs> but hear what I'm saying. Nothing is a waste. It's an education. It's an opportunity to bring life to somebody. Is this helping you? And so you're designed for blessing. You're designed to not be confused. You're designed for single-mindedness, not double-mindedness. Singular, singular, narrow road, not wide road. Oh, you can do it any way you want. No, you can't. Jesus didn't come and say, hey, do it how you want. He said, do it like this. Tell a child no. Narrow it. That means train up a child in the way it should go. That means narrow the path. No, son, you're not going there. Well, how come you, you let Michaela go to the mall by herself? And I said, because I can trust Michaela, Justin. <laughs> you're not hanging out at the mall. I don't trust you there. Right? Adam, get away from Mary Beth. Why? I don't trust you with her yet. <laughs> but see, in America, we don't, nobody going to tell me what to do. You're not going to interrupt my plans. You're not going to interrupt my revelation. Good, then you'll always stay in a small place and do small things and never fulfill generational blessing on your family ever in your life. How do I know? I'm guilty of that person. I've seen what it was like doing it this way. And man, I learned a lot here. This wasn't wasted. I couldn't handle this then. If, if I would have had to handle this then, I may have walked away from God altogether. 
because I was so full of myself. But one real encounter with Jesus changed everything. Prayed in tongues since I was seven, but nothing changed me until I had a revelation of the cross. Baptized in the Holy Spirit at seven, right about the time Tanya went to heaven, our little sister. God used that to get me through a season to what? Get me to the right people. Are you hearing me today? Get me to the right people. He wants his children to do the journey together. I don't want my two grandsons not speaking. I don't want Micah and, and Noah to be at odds with each other. I want them working together in the ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and so this generational blessing that God wants to bring through us through marriage. Marriage is the arrowhead to the arrow of family. If family is going to fly like it's supposed to be, the marriage has to be on point. Marriage and family will always be the portrait of heaven. There's two times in history when the lust of the flesh and the anti-marriage, anti-masculinity, anti-being feminine, God created man and woman. That was his design. And I ask you the question, who told you that could be changed? Well, I'll tell you who it was, Satan himself and his disciples. Satan always works in a coalition. He always looks for someone weaker than them. He wants to change opinion by going to speak to weaker people and create a coalition. I used to be involved in one of those coalitions. Did you hear what Pastor Chamberlain said? I don't agree with that. And I, I mean, I had, a, I had a large group. Some of them even gave me money under the table. Well, I don't think he's paying you enough here. Oh, thank you. I'll keep this coalition going. Until one day I had an encounter with Jesus. I said, I've become a, a spiritual criminal. And I remember the first time I tore up a check that was handed to me by that same person. It was over Halloween. If you have an outreach on Halloween, I'm done supporting you. The best thing I ever did was to never receive another check from that devil ever again. The second time I had to deal with a devil like that is when we started this church. Here's money, as long as you do what he wants. Da, 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 da. Is he happy? Da, 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 da. Is you happy? Da, da. Oh, another check. Da, 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 da. And my wife hates me. My children don't want to be around me. But I got the circus going. We look good. Promise land looks great. Pastor Mike's awesome. He's helping a lot of people. And that's true. A lot of people were helped. Because anytime the name of Jesus is proclaimed, somebody's going to change. Even if a devil's the one presenting. I pointed at me. Devil. Coalition from hell. And so anytime you get caught up in whisperings, especially young believers... Here's the thing, a young believer at this church knows more than a 20-year-old veteran in a traditional church. And they see it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say family. family. Designed for blessing. How many want God's blessing on your family? You don't want divorce to come to your children. Right? You want the blessing of God. Get close to him. Get close to God. Get close to his people. Amen? So, those two times I spoke about, I'm going to brush through this. Solomon Gomorrah, when God considered speaking to Abraham about his decision. Can you imagine having a relationship with God that he would consider speaking to you about what's going to happen in the earth? Man, that's the kind of relationship I long for. I want to know him like that. And he considered Abraham. He spoke to him about his plans to destroy those two cities because of the anti-marriage, fornication, homosexuality, perversion. They even tried to do homosexual activities with angels. And God said, you know what, enough. Abraham, you better get what's yours out of there because I'm about ready to lower the boom. I'm finished. There comes a place where God's finished with your nonsense. We talk about his grace, but there is a place where you don't want to be. You don't know God, you're not serving him properly, don't die. Get it right. 
Second time was the days of Noah. We hear that all the time. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns this time. Brothers and sisters, we are here 2.0. We are here. And like he said to Noah, and like he said to Abraham, who do you love? Jesus is about to return. I'm going to prophesy to you today. He's coming soon. And what you're going to, forget about his coming. You may die tomorrow. Your children, your family, that you're busy yapping about nonsense. And you got people in your family that don't even know Jesus. And yet you're more passionate about our habits and, and our finances and the market. People crying over the market. People crying over politics. Who cares? And, and Jesus gets it because when he left, the first thing, the day he's leaving, they ask him, hey, when are you going to settle this thing with the, the Democrats and the Republicans here? Conservatism over socialism. When are you going to solve that, Jesus? says, only the Father knows about those details. And what they were talking about when he came back and established the final kingdom. In other words, when he returns. Listen, the kingdom we're a part of is above everything on this earth. And if you're caught up in the politics of things, you're caught up in the market, you're caught up in finance, you're caught up in all that. Listen, God will allow you to lose everything you've got just to be with him again. He loves you that much. Sometimes the blessing is what he takes from you. And there was a season Paul and I lost everything, mainly relationships. And God has restored. He's made new. Starting with us, the two of us than our children, and beyond and on and on. Are you hearing me today? Generational blessing. He's coming to find faithful people to demonstrate and appropriate the mercy of God on this generation. The redemptive power of the blood, you have been called to bring that to the people. Not in Sodom and Gomorrah, not in the days of Noah, but in Samaria and, Samaria and in and the uttermost parts of the earth. There was an Abraham and his house his entire household. There was a Noah in his entire household in a time of judgment coming, in time of a great change. There's another great change about to happen. Jesus is coming back. There was Abraham and there was Noah, but today, friend, there is you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are the one. Our family's the one. We're going to be a standard and we're going to get our children in the ark. I know it looks, it's loud and it's, it's, it's intimidating. Do not be intimidated by the works of the devil. Do not be intimidated by the sound of the culture. Praise the Lord as we were worshiping together. Why does God give us that presence? That we would have the power and the anointing to go out and change someone's life. To go out and minister the healing power to your neighbors and to your friends, to the politicians. Stop trying to get to politicians to change your policy. Get to the politician and change their heart. The policy will follow. Let's go to Acts 1, 6. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Speaking about earthly kingdom. God's not going to restore America to a great kingdom. Every kingdom is going to fall. He's here to restore his kingdom. He's here to establish his authority in the United States of America. And because of the greatness of God, America will be great. But when God is pushed out of America, we won't be great. And so there's a season, there's a time, and there's a destiny for us today to seize the moment, to be the miracle, to be the life, to be the anointed one, to touch and touch people's lives that they may receive the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit. The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many felt the presence of the Lord a while ago? Wasn't it awesome? Okay, don't waste it. It wasn't for the goosebump. What's going to be the fruit of that moment today? Because the truth of the matter is, that's what you need to be doing for an hour before the sun comes up every morning. That's the function of that. We do it here at church on Sunday to give you an appetizer. But that's something you can do every day without a band. Jesus never had a band. Are you here? You with me? But you will be, receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a witness. Telling people about me everywhere. See, the, the, the world has become a court. And Satan's put many of his woke individuals on the witness stand. 
Some hairy, burly man dressed up like a woman wanting to read a book to my grandchild. Not on my watch. But I don't hate that man. I pity him. We protect our children, but we go find the man and lead him to Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We love them to Jesus. But we must stand up as a witness. You cannot be silenced. In these next few weeks as we speak about family, please, I I even thought about bringing the children in here to hear this. Because I don't know if some of you parents have the guts to tell them. If you'd sit down and listen to what the, what's being heard at school from the classmates and from teachers and counselors across the region in which we minister, hell is raging to destroy your kids. Hell wants to destroy the generational blessing. You were designed for blessing, not a mockery. Not a mockery of the living God. And it's time, not stand up and protest. Stand up and be a witness for what God has done in your life. Be a witness for what he's done. Share what God has done. That's why we speak about what God has done in our lives. We need to stand up in our community and not wave a sign and say, you devil, you're going to hell. No, come up beside him and say, you can be, you can have what I have. You You were designed for blessing. Let me show you how to get it. And so in this court of life with Satan putting his witnesses on the stand, and I know he has a lot of media, but I'm here to tell you, there's just as much media knocking on someone's door as there is what's blasting on the TV. Because the nonsense of the media has become mute. The impact will be stifled by the Holy Spirit. But he's looking for some people who will take that anointing and do your purpose. To not let nothing get in the way of what you've been called to do. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about Jesus, telling people about me everywhere. In Del Mar, in Salisbury, in Cambridge, in Bethany, and the uttermost parts of the world. Are you with me? Why do you want the Holy Spirit working through you? Are you looking for an experience? That's a popular thing now. Let's have an experience. Let's have a yoga moment. Really? Really? I mean, you know, there's, there's no cultivation around your, your tree of life. There's no, there's no fruit on it. Put your hand, get with God, and then get, get some dirt under your fingernails. You get into the soil of where people are broken. Get involved in the, the parents of the one their child just took their life. Get involved when the kid has a car accident. Go to the house. Go, get involved when, when, when a police officer shot. Get involved when not just the, the, the one who was shot, but the family, the one did the shooting. Get in, get your hands into the harvest. You're not, you're not even, you don't even have an opinion because you've not even got your hands into the soil yet to begin to do the work of what we speak about. It's far beyond the little opinion that happens in these four walls. Come ride with me a week. I like doing ride-alongs with police officers. See what they go through. I challenge you to do a ride-along with me. To stick with me for a week and see the things that you'll never see until you get your hands into the soil. Just like someone who's been on the battlefield, seeing things a man should never have to see and has to relive it every day until the blood of Jesus heals his mind. Amen. We need to be the light. It's not just a cliche. We are the light. The Holy Spirit is to get behind your work, not to give you a goosebump, to empower you to change the world. Jesus came, lived the life to inspire us, to pay the price for our sin. But the Holy Spirit is here to empower you to do the work. If you don't do the work, you don't need the Holy Spirit. Theoretically. Don't take things out of context. You need to understand the context of things. The enemy has always worked. We talked about the strategic to make people quit. He convinced two-thirds of the angels. Don't you think he can whisper you a lie? They're right there, right there in the very throne room where the Holy Spirit has existed. He was able to convince two-thirds of God's created angels to believe a lie. And somehow we think, I'm beyond all that. I've lived a little. Really? I want to challenge you today. It's a whole lot rougher than I'm trying to, to let on. It's, 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 it's harder than we can imagine. 
but it's also better than we can imagine. You see, you get both with it. The, 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 the biggest difference in having thousands of people versus hundreds of people is thousands of more problems. People still getting saved, but there are more issues, there are more problems, right? You have four babies, there's, especially if they're close, you're gonna have lots of diapers, right? A lot of babies around here, lots of diapers. I saw one of our grown men running from the bathroom. I need gloves, I need gloves. <laughs> He's gone, I was gonna pick on him. I said, you afraid of that diaper? He said, if you saw it, you'd be afraid too. There's stuff coming out that I've never seen before. But that's the ministry. That's what God's called us to. And so the greatest enemy of the vision is our self-preservation, our traditions, things we think we are, should be established. In our, this is what I'm going to do. And I know it's hard. I remember when we first started, I thought, wow, we're going to be like the other churches in town. I'll be able to have a service in the morning and meet the other pastors in Ocean City on the beach. I literally said that out of my mouth. We could actually enjoy a Sunday for once. Because I, I've seen a growing thing that would look awesome, the music was awesome, preaching was contemporary, and they're on the beach on a Sunday afternoon. Not us, we were getting ready for a Sunday evening service. Said, Lord, we start this church, I'll be able to go on the beach on Sunday afternoon too. I can't remember one yet. <laughs> but I also cannot replace the joy and the satisfactions in my spirit. All I, all I need is one more soul. One more life coming to Christ. See people coming in here, broken one week, next week, smile on their face. God healing things. That never, ever gets old. I can promise you, there will be an interruption in your life when you decide to throw it all in. I promise you that you'll be interrupted in your path to mediocrity, to go on a path of greatness. It can only be achieved with help from the Father, protection and provision from the Holy Spirit and the redemptive, redemptive blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm gonna take another few minutes if that's all right. I'm gonna take 10 minutes, give or take. I want to get to the foundation of this because we're talking about marriage, but there's a big foundation. You have to understand why did he do this? Why, why did he create man and woman? Because of this, what we're speaking about. God's genius and the key ingredient in the master's plan for redemption is the family. That's why it's under fire. It's targeted. Marriage has been targeted and targeted and targeted. And, and Let's, let's go quickly. In Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 27. So God created human beings in his own image. And in the image of God, he created them male and he created male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. Somebody say, I was created to be blessed. He created them. He blessed them. He created them. He blessed them. And then he gave them a command, not a suggestion. Then God blessed them and said, why the blessing? Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Get to work. And by the way, it's going to rain soon. You're going to have to start cutting grass too. I think it's neat that our, you know, people say they want to be like their father. I don't think my father liked cutting grass. Because he didn't make it rain until after those people here to work the garden. That's just, a, I guess, a pastor's joke. Bev got it. We're so like-minded. Anyway, I hate cutting grass, and God did too. <laughs> then God blessed him and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Take a thought, walk in authority. Reign over the fish of the sea and the birds of the, and the sky. You notice how everything that God told us to govern, our current government that's so indoctrinated in the Antichrist spirit is trying to take all the, I mean, they're trying to take lobsters away from us. I don't know, maybe we shouldn't be eating it anyhow. Maybe it's a blessing. I know we, we don't eat so much of it anymore because of the cholesterol. But I'm just saying, everything that we were given authority, you see how the enemy's just trying to, huh? 
and we're going to teach your kids and we're going to give them this pill and we're going to help them abort their baby if they get pregnant. We're not going to tell mom and dad. We're just going to take all this stuff. Everything that God gave us, it's not the government. It's the Antichrist. Why, why are we seeing that? It's, a, it's an alert. Hello, house is on fire. Gather the children. Gather your wife, your husband. The house is on fire. Jesus is coming. It's going to burn. Abraham said, family, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be leveled. Come. The angels warned him, come. Don't look back. What Lot's wife did, look back. Boom, she's gone. There will not be an excuse in heaven. That's why you need to be discipled to help with the excuses. The number one thing that Pastor Bird helps me with is the excuses I come up with. He said yesterday, I want you to start doing the marriage encounters. I'm like, okay, what's he? I'm thinking, I'm 60 this, this year. I got 10 years left. Do I really want to go to Paris? Do I want to go to South Africa to do a marriage encounter? See, the flesh will say, but I have all this. God says, no, no, this is in good hands. You don't need me and Paula here. You don't need Pastor Bert here. The DNA of the vision has been planted well within the generations. And those who want it will get it. Those who don't, they'll end up somewhere else. That's okay. That doesn't mean they're going to hell. But I don't want to do the kumbaya, the yoga experience. 50, 60 year old man rocking out on the guitar when they should be preaching. People playing in the band and playing in the clubs, playing in the band and their children aren't serving Jesus. You know how much time it takes to be able to do what they do up here? Too much for someone who's old enough to be discipling people. Am I helping you? Listen, and I'm talking about the very God of my life was music. All I ever lived for was to generationally. My mom and dad could sing. The only woman I ever met in person that was pitch perfect as Carol Rittenhouse. I didn't realize it until she died. I played the, re the record that I was embarrassed of because I'm playing 3-4 time on a 4-4 song. I was an eight-year-old drummer. I didn't know any better. They said play, I played. I learned discipleship real young. We're going to have a band. You're going to play drums. You're going to play guitar. Let's go. Yes, sir. And I'm playing 4-4 four, four time in a 3-4 song. You know, country music. I was going. <laughs> I've got proof it's recorded. And we drove all the way to Ohio to a studio to do that. I'm like, please, God, don't let anybody in the band that I'm in now at the church or not, at, at, at school. God, please don't let them get that album. And one of my friends came to school, one at North Dorchester. He, he said, look what I found, Don Ho. That's what they called me at school, Don Ho. And it was the Lighthouse album. Look at this blonde-headed beetle on the back of here. We didn't know you was a Christian. And they're playing. I'm like, oh, I was mortified. Because by then, I had learned how to play drums. But guess where they found it? In the yard sale. <laughs> 25 cents for all that embarrassment. Listen, I'm sharing this with you today. I want you to see that everybody's been through something. I don't stand here. My wife and I don't stand here because we haven't been through some things. We haven't seen some things. We're only here because we stayed faithful. That's it. And if you will learn to be faithful to that Holy Spirit, and I don't mean to in any way to diminish the presence of the Holy Spirit. I could not live without that. I could not live with at least an hour to an hour and a half every day, just me and him. You know who taught me that? My wife. You see, in the first part of my marriage, she was always hungry for the word. And I thought, I thought, good Lord, we've been in church. And she's looking over the notes that Ray Chamberlain preached. And, and he was a theologian. I mean, he preached some deep, deep, deep stuff. And she's writing. And I'm like, man, we've been to church. Isn't, isn't it our time? I hear that now from people. Isn't it our time? And, and, and what I did is I learned to reverence her time with the Father. See, that's her daughter. And if she wants to spend time with her dad, I ain't messing with him. I'm staying out of that picture. So I want to challenge you today as a family, as a married couple, however you come here today. And we're going to get, Pastor Paul is going to be bringing the second half of this next week. And I want you to know that God believes in you. 
What time is it actually? I, st I still can take some more time. I'm going to read this last scripture, otherwise we're going to quit at an odd place. This doesn't even get to the points. This is just the prelude. And again, those of you going to the marriage encounter, this is to help us drill down on some stuff when we get to the, we're going to go deeper on some of this to help you, to teach you how to conquer this stuff, to learn some of the mistakes that we've made. Listen to this. And this is the most misused scripture when it comes to family relationships in the world. In the same way in, in Genesis, no, sorry, 1 Peter 3, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 3. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands. Okay, just lost five people. But look at, look at the, I'm reading from the Amplified, the girl version, that gives you all the details of what's meant here. Be submissive to your own husbands. That means not the guy at work. Subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibility, the responsibilities entrusted to the husband. He's called to die that you may live. Submit to that as he's doing the will, as unto the Lord, Ephesians 5. Not as inferior, not as a beat down, abused woman. Hear me now. But out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God. And so partnering with them. In other words, he's too dumb to do it by himself. You have to be there to, to, to help Help him sift what God is saying and give him the wisdom to apply it. It's a unit. We're missing things and we need each other. Are you with me? So that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over. See the vision right here. They may be won to Christ. They may be won to purpose. Won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives. Without discussion by the godly lives of their wives. In other words, it won't be even be a discussion. It'll be the fact that they saw the two of you together. I remember when I first met Pastor Bird and the family, they were young little kids, and, but I walked into the church and the way they prayed, I said, I would like to have a church that prays like this. I remember our pastor back in the day calling prayer and it'd be 20 people pray and three would fall asleep. I remember those days, and I was one of them. I'm like, why are we here? I didn't see the purpose behind it. I didn't say, why, why, why am I doing that? I can do this at home. You're taking me away from my family? I didn't, I didn't have understanding. But the very model of a Christian marriage will win people to the Lord. Why is it that no one's following you? Why don't they want to be like you? I remember Preston Bird asking me that question. Oh, I want to hit him. If you offend me one more time, I'm going to be in jail. I'm being honest. When you see your modest and respectful behavior together with your devotion and appreciation, love for your husband, encourage him and enjoy him as a blessing from God. Born, created, designed for blessing. Whew. Your adornment must not merely be external with interweaving and elaborate knotting of the hair. How many have some nice rows in your hair today? looking good, looking fresh, and wearing gold jewelry and being superficial, preoccupied with dressing in expensive clothing. Don't tell me the Bible's old-fashioned. You know how long ago this was written, young people? It was before you had a phone. <laughs> I didn't have a phone when I was a kid. The phone I had when a kid could be used as a weapon, <laughs> especially if you had one of those 25-foot cold cords. Man, you could throw that, whoo, 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 wrap around, and pull them in and beat them. The handset would give someone a concussion. You hit them in the temple, they did. Especially in that, that pea green phone that we had. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm thinking about my flight at four. I'm thinking about things. But I'm going I'm to stay on the Lord. Help me get out of this rabbit hole. Verse 5. Be in this way in former times the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands and adapting themselves to them. I'm going to lose some people right here, but I'm, I'm going to fix it. Just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Go ahead, Paula, call me Lord. <laughs> Lord. T turn to your husband and say, Lord. 
Of course, I knew all you women were going to be here today, so I took a little extra time looking at the back of it. I said, Lord, this doesn't fit our culture. He said, yes, it does. Read on. It's just a phrase used in ancient times to bring honor. It was Lord with a little L. Kind of like, it was an inside joke with the women. They were really calling him loser. <laughs> Couldn't do this without me. No, it was shown respect and honor. And what happened to Sarah? Her wildest dream to become a mother, to have a son, because she was willing to honor her husband. Ephesians 5 says, how do you honor your husband? Out of reverence for Christ. In other words, if God can save you from your filthiness, let that saving of your filthiness be the motivation to honor your husband or wife. A single man wrote that. Paul, we're going to talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> are, are you with me? Now, now this, is, this next part is the part that I'm sure before Paula was in her mother's womb, she helped write this with the father. And you have become her daughters if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. See, God's not called you to be abused and beat down. That is being respectful toward your husband, but not giving into intimidation, nor allowing yourself to be led into sin, nor to be harmed. God's not stupid. He has principles in place. But guys, there's a limit. There's a dog choker chain around your neck, and the father has the other end. Don't mess with his daughter. He will snatch you up. You have to fear the living God. That means to give total honor. He's the only thing in this life. Your career can't destroy you. Your finances can't destroy you. The criminals can't destroy you. They shoot me dead. I'm in heaven. Who lost? Now he's got to go to trial and spend the rest of his life in jail. I'm in heaven. Not even thinking about the bullet to my head. Are you hearing me today? I want us to get this. As we move into this year, God needs you. God wants you. He wants to work through you and for you and empower you, assist you. He's already inspired us. That's why you're here. You know about Jesus. You're here. Now let the Holy Spirit empower you to do the work you've been called to do. And he'll help you. He'll be gracious to you until you get it right. Don't be so fearful about committing to what he's asked you to do. Trust him. Trust him and let him guide you. In the same way you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. Stop being a bonehead, in other words. Intellect. Right, men? You can start playing that music now. I'm getting really... In the same way you husbands live with your wives, not with your work. Live with your wives. Do the ministry with your wives and your children. You need family time? Let your children get involved in winning the loss. Let your children be with you when you go pray for the sick. Turn your, your children and your grandchildren to prophets to the nations as they go into the schools and pray for cafeteria ladies. They pray for teachers. They pray for the counselors. That's what God will do with your children. How do I know? Because he's done it with mine. Now, not my kids. They were the opposite in school. Dropping stink bombs in the HVA system. Me and my son would be in jail today if he did he, different things like that. And I'm like, why is the police calling me again? But what I'm saying is, fruit that remains, don't quit when it gets rough. The first round is tough. Raising the first round is tough. That's why you need somebody older speaking into your life. Someone more wise than you speaking into your life as you raise your children. And then one day you get to be a grandparent and enjoy the fruits of getting through the first round. Enjoying the fruits of making it to the next level of the tournament. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. You're on a winning team. You and your family can do it. You were born to be blessed. You were born and destined to win. And there ain't nothing hell can create to disrupt it unless you believe the lie. Come on, let's stand to your feet before I get... Security pulls me out of here. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful for family today? you thankful that God loves you today? Are you committed to his purposes for your life? And you may not can't say yes, just prophesy. Say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I need his help. I understand. I, I understand plenty that it's, it's tough. But listen, you, you, you can't, you can't disrespect, children, you can't disrespect your parents and expect God to bless you. You can't disrespect your leaders and think you're going to go somewhere. 
You can't speak negative things about people. You can't speak lies and expect the blessing of God to rest on you. You'll be tormented. Satan will sift you with torment. Amen? Don't be like the average American Christian and never return a phone call. It's funny, when I work with guys overseas, they call like this. They, they answer like this. It's challenging to get people who are so busy in life to pick up a phone. Why? They're preoccupied. I'm saying this to help you, that we can get to a place, every household getting to a place. Because I'm here to tell you, it's not going to get easier. But my friend, you're going to get better. And you're going to be able to handle the next round. This first tournament, I told my grandson, I said, you took a beating yesterday in the goal. But God's preparing you for the championship. This is your first little team you're playing on. But one day, amen? And I said, I loved all that I saw on the soccer field. But I said, you know what I love most, Hannon? How you stood up there and worshiped the Lord. And our kids need to hear that. They need to be involved. They need to be a part of. And that's what the Bible, and that's what Jesus' vision is all about. To get us all engaged in the eternal process. You're watching by stream today. We thank you for being with us. Bethany, YouTube, where, wherever you guys are today, I, I, I'm just going to dismiss you to the studio. If you haven't received Jesus as your personal Savior, accept him today. The pastor in the studio is going to speak with you, and I trust that you'll just say yes to Jesus right now. In the house, if you've never done it, on stream, just say yes. Say it right now. Say yes to Jesus. Lord, I receive you today. And then the pastor wants to pray with you and get your connection so we can connect with you. We love you. Church, can we give those online a great hand? Thank you so much. Pastor Mike, uh, what an inspiring message. You know, we're so thankful for what God's doing here in the house. And I trust that, you know, if, you, if you're listening to the message today, I know that God has spoken to you and how to be a, you know, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. And, but it starts with what he shared in the scripture in Acts, you know, it's receiving the Holy Spirit. And so if you want to accept Jesus today, if you say, you know, I don't have a relationship with God and I need to, I need to start there. It starts by just yielding, yielding yourself to God, giving your heart to Jesus, allowing him to come on the inside and do a work. We, in, we invite him in on the inside. That's what changes our life. We don't have to try to fix ourselves. We don't have to try to fix our situations. The Bible says that it's God that works in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. That's a big load off. The pressure isn't all on our shoulders to fix everything. So if that's you today, you know, you need help in any area of your life, it starts with accepting Jesus. And if, if you would, if that's you today, just pray this prayer with me. And after, after we pray, we're going to put a link up that you can connect with us that we can walk this life out with you. Uh, it'll be a, a link at the bottom of the, the stream right now where you can click on it and send us a text message or if it's easier for you just to click on it and give us a call. We, we have people standing by ready to speak with you to help you. So anyway, if that's you today and you want to accept Jesus, maybe for the first time or maybe you want to recommit your life to Jesus, you, you say, you know, I used to have a relationship with God, but I've walked away. My life is, is broken. I, I need to reconnect with God. This is also for you today. So if that's you, I want you to close your eyes and pray with me right now. Unless you're driving, keep your eyes open. But you can also pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, I thank you that you gave your life for me. You gave your life that I could be born again. And right now I thank you that every drop of blood that was given for me comes and changes my life. And Holy Spirit, I invite you to be my best friend. I invite you to come and live on the inside of me. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. If you made that decision today, I want to pray for you right now. God, I thank you for each person watching today, this stream, Lord, those that have accepted Christ for the first time or recommitted. Lord, we lift them up to you today. Lord, we lift each person up watching this stream. God, I pray for your protection over their life. 
Lord, I pray for your anointing, Lord, to, to touch them right where they are right now, Lord. We pray right now for a change, Lord, direction, Lord, in lives, God. Pray for a new beginning, Lord, over each person, Lord, that's accepted you. And Lord, I pray that from this moment forward, Lord, your favor would rest on their life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching with us today. Please click on that link and connect at this time. Thank you.